In the year 2000, the President of the United States established the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument from BLM Public Lands in southwestern Oregon. The monument was established in recognition of its remarkable ecology, its diversity of habitats, and its biological diversity, or biodiversity. This rich enclave of natural resources is a biological crossroads, the interface of the Cascade, Klamath, and Siskiyou ecoregions in an area of unique geology, biology, climate, and topography. The monument is home to a spectacular array of rare and beautiful species of plants and animals whose survival in this region depends upon its continued ecological integrity. From Pilot Rock, a prominent geologic feature in the monument, these connections become clear. The Tekelma tribe of native peoples called this Tansatsanifta, or stone standing up. It was a beacon for early pioneers on the Applegate Trail. But from here, we also see a more modern construct. Interstate Highway 5, snaking across the land north towards the Willamette Valley and south into California. I-5 handles 17,000 vehicles daily and is a huge barrier of concrete noise and exhaust fumes as cars and trucks work their way up and down the Siskiyou summit. This section of freeway is a red zone for wildlife vehicle collisions. Across Oregon, there are more than 6,000 vehicle collisions involving deer or elk each year. The cost for each collision involving deer averages $6,617. And for elk, the average costs for vehicle damages, towing, and medical expenses are greater than $17,000 per collision. The east-west ecological connections that are so important to this region are severed by the interstate. Wildlife that travel these corridors are stopped. Sometimes they are deflected, simply turning away from all the noise and traffic. Other times, the consequences are more final, with fatal results for wildlife and horrific experiences for travelers. So in 2021, a group of local concerned scientists and conservationists came together to form the Southern Oregon Wildlife Crossing Coalition. The coalition quickly expanded to include 17 organizations, including state and federal agencies, hunting groups, environmental and educational institutions. We really wanted to do something to provide safe passage for animals and wildlife in this area between the city of Ashland over the Siskiyou Summit and down to the California border. We're standing at one of the great biological crossroads of North America, the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument. The Siskiyou Mountains, an ancient range here, meet the volcanic cascades and the sagebrush of the Great Basin meets the oak woodlands of California. And all of that Intermingling creates tremendous biological diversity, including abundant wildflowers, over 100 species of butterflies, amazing birds like the great gray owl, and a variety of mammals, including elk, cougars, black bear, coyotes, bobcats, and the rare Pacific fisher. A variety of scientists realized the importance of this region uh, as early as the 1980s and worked for many years to establish the monument. But the four to six lanes of Interstate 5 is a major barrier for the movement of animals through this ecological corridor. It's exciting to imagine this reconnected landscape once the wildlife crossing or crossings are in place. Especially in the light of climate change, there is a, a huge need for animals to move back and forth freely, to go from winter to summer ranges to find mates, and to seek out the habitats that they need to live their lives. And this will make that possible. And it's a very exciting prospect. So the Southern Oregon Wildlife Crossing Coalition is a diverse group. We're in it for the long haul. We all have our special interests, whether it's hunting species, wildlife conservation, traffic safety, all of us working together to make this project a reality. By definition, sportsmen and women are conservationists, and we aspire to bolster our ungulate populations, our deer populations, our elk populations, for the benefit of all Oregonians. The number of wildlife vehicle collisions that occur in Oregon are similar to the number of animals that are legally harvested by hunters. The difference between hunting and wildlife vehicle collisions is that hunting is in the confines of sound wildlife management, whereas wildlife vehicle collisions are indiscriminate. 
they take fawns, they take females, they take fawns inside of females, right, during the spring. Um, this results in something called additive mortality. Additive mortality leads to population declines, whereas hunting does not. Wildlife vehicle collisions can absolutely have impacts on populations. It's imperative that we improve habitat connectivity for wildlife, particularly for game species, large-bodied ungulates that need to get across the highway to attain resources. This will increase their fitness and improve their survival and their reproduction for the benefit of all Oregonians. Here at ODOT, we track collisions of all types, and wildlife uh, vehicle collisions are one of those categories that we track. And being in the monument area and the Siskiyous, we have a significant number of crashes that have been occurring there. We have large and small mammals that, that come across the road just looking to migrate from one side of the monument to the other. And that really has peaked the number of crashes on the Siskiyous. So it's a high value target for us to be able to reduce those crashes. To be honest, when I first heard this, I was kind of skeptical that we would be able to actually pull this off with the kind of budget that we were talking about. Our team really started to reach out to contacts that they have in other state agencies and see uh, you know, how folks have addressed this challenge before. And we found a number of locations where DOTs had built similar type structures for the same purpose. So we were able to gain a lot of knowledge from what they had done so far. And it turns out that the concrete arch concept that's been used elsewhere was really conducive to the environment we had here on I-5 and would really help get the end product, the structure that we needed, as well as the feasibility to build it and be cost effective at the same time. So we've seen from our previous projects up in the Lava Butte area, after five years of monitoring, we were able to see an 86% reduction in the number of wildlife vehicle collisions. So we know that the stretch of a highway is a major migration corridor for mule deer and elk. We see dozens of wildlife vehicle collisions every spring and fall during the migration season. But after implementation of these wildlife passage structures, even though they're designed for mule deer and elk, we see them benefit a wide range of species, from bobcats to cougars to black bear, so that they really, again, they benefit not just the target species, but a whole range of wildlife. In the same way that we've seen a reduction in the number of wildlife vehicle collisions and increased wildlife passage here in Central Oregon, I believe we'll have similar success in the I-5 corridor in Southwest Oregon. In 2022, the coalition raised funds to complete a feasibility study and a conceptual design report that prioritized six underpasses and more importantly, two overpasses on this important stretch of highway. And the report has now been turned over to the Oregon Department of Transportation for the next phase of work, which is engineering and design. We really have a good path forward to be able to make this project work and to fit the funding that is available to, to help this happen. So it's a real win-win when ODOT can do a project that really provides increased safety for the traveling public, helps with our operations, and we also have a great benefit to the environment that the animals have a path to migrate from one side of the monument to the other and new resources that they haven't seen in years. So in 2021 and 22, we examined the feasibility of establishing a network of wildlife crossings on the 14-mile stretch of Interstate 5 between the city of Ashland and the California border. Ultimately, we focused in on eight sites, uh, including three existing bridge structures, a number of existing culverts, as well as a few sites where we might construct a new overcrossing structure of some sort. The bridges all had uh, limited potential. The culverts appeared to be problematic. They were often too narrow or the run under the freeway was too long and would be very complex and expensive to replace. So we kind of ended up focusing on the overcrossing areas. We ended up with two priority sites. The southern site is in the heart of the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument. While the site at Barron Creek is close to the Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest, but has privately owned lands on both sides of the interstate. Fortunately, two organizations, the Southern Oregon Land Conservancy and the Pacific Forest Trust, are working with private landowners to conserve their lands near the Siskiyou Summit in the nearby Colstein Valley, 
and northward towards Ashland through conservation easements and climate resilient forest management. The effort to build wildlife crossings along I-5 has been bolstered by a coordinated effort by the BLM and Southern Oregon University to document wildlife presence along the interstate. So Southern Oregon University, together with our partners at the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument at the BLM, have placed about 20 remotely triggered trail cameras all along the Interstate 5 corridor between Ashland and the California border. And we've placed these cameras at locations that we think wildlife are going to want to use to cross the highway. So this includes sites like a railroad bridge going over the highway, culverts that are running under the highway, as well as local roads. And we've also targeted sites where we think the landscape is likely to be a place where animals want to cross the highway. And we've been monitoring these cameras for about two years to see what different wildlife we find and how they're using these areas near the highway. SOU's environmental science policy and sustainability major has all seniors do a capstone as part of their bachelor's degree. And the students who are working with me have really taken the lead on a lot of this project. They're the ones going out into the field here to check some of the cameras that we have. They're maintaining them. They're going through literally hundreds of thousands of photos and videos that we're capturing at these sites. And they're classifying what the animals are, what they're doing, and providing that data to our partners so that we can make decisions about the wildlife crossings. So we've already used the information that my students and I have collected as part of the feasibility studies to determine what sites would make sense as wildlife crossings across the highway. We can help determine where certain animals of concern, like deer that are often being hit, or areas that have a ton of diversity, like here at Mariposa site, um, that we might prioritize for wildlife crossings. We're also collecting data continually into the future with the idea that because we have information on how wildlife used this area before wildlife crossings are built, we can actually measure the positive impacts that those crossings have on wildlife in the future. I think the enthusiasm that I see in my legislative colleagues really reflects what we see from Oregonians across the state. I saw some polling a couple of years ago that showed that 86% of Oregonians think we should construct new crossings. The legislature started getting interested in this about five years ago. We passed some initial bills to start the agencies looking, then we passed legislation to allocate money for planning and design. The next step is to put some money into actual construction. That's particularly important because we think state money could be the match for drawing in federal money that's going to come to us through the Infrastructure Act. Yeah, this is really almost like a two-phase project. We really have the site location where the structure is going to be in place and that has a unique engineering element of its own and then they'll coincide together but we'll actually kind of look at this in two phases of the project we get the site location set up and we get the design underway for that then we need to be able to actually fence the environment around that to help channel the animals to the overcrossing and help them make the most use of it. So that is a challenge in this situation. Uh, we're working in a mountain pass and we have various terrain to go through. So that's something new for us as well to have a fencing project that is gonna run possibly a couple of miles in each direction from the crossing to help it be effective. While constructed overcrossings are big projects with healthy price tags, other wildlife crossing projects in this area will be less expensive. Take the Mount Ashland exit, for instance. Here, engineering and wildlife consultants recommend retrofitting the existing bridges by constructing a wildlife bench under the bridges that is concealed from nearby traffic by woody material, rock piles, and vegetation. The estimated cost for a wildlife-friendly crossing under the existing bridges at the Mount Ashland exit is steel for about $90,000. Existing culverts can be enhanced as well, or perhaps replaced with larger diameter, more wildlife-friendly culverts when regular maintenance or upgrades are needed. But depending on culverts to safely move wildlife, especially larger animals, is problematic in this area because of the long distances needed to traverse the width of the interstate with wide medians. The existing culvert at Bear Gulch, for example, is a whopping 699 feet long. Thus, overcrossings are the preferred option in many areas to move wildlife easily across the interstate. 
So, what does the future hold for this stretch of Interstate 5 in Southwest Oregon? Ultimately, these wildlife crossings will help us achieve a safer traveling experience on one of the busiest highways in Oregon and help reach the vision of the presidential proclamations, an ecological wonder located at the ecological crossroads of life with all lanes open.